Welcome to standard number four of geometry. This one is a little bit vocabulary intensive. You're going to have to learn what things like alternate interior angles mean. Alternate interior. And then there's also alternate exterior. So I've abbreviated that word since I spelled it out for you in the first one. Alternate interior is how you spell that. And now alternate ALT period for alternate EXT period for exterior. So you got interior and exterior with an alternate in front of that. So what does that mean? Well, the way I like to explain it, the definition of interior and exterior that most people know has to do with a house. If you're an interior designer, you rearrange the furniture and whatnot inside of a house. If you want to paint the exterior of a house, you paint the outside of the house. So most people understand interior and exterior in relation to a house, the inside and the outside. So what I'm going to do is build a little house here in this picture by connecting these two lines and saying that's the front door and Here's a window over here. So here's our little house. And what's inside of the house are angles three, four, five, and six are inside the house. And what's outside of the house, all this space outside of our rectangulish looking house are angles one, two, seven, and eight. So we have eight angles here. The reason we have eight angles is because we had two lines and we cross that line with a third line. And that when we did that, it created one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight angles. That third line is called a transversal. So there's another piece of vocabulary that you need to have, but I haven't even explained what alternate and interior and exterior mean yet. So I'm not gonna drop another vocab word on you yet. Let's get through these two. So back to the house. Inside the house are three, four, five, and six. Some combination of those four are going to be your alternate interior angles. And then on the exterior of our house, on the outside of our parallel line, well, they're not parallel. On the outside of our two lines, we have angles one, two, seven, and eight. So we have four exterior angles and four interior angles. Now we just have to deal with the word alternate. An alternate means like flip-flopping every other. You alternate this, then that. You can get with this and then that. All right. So alternate, when it's talking about in this particular case, it means the opposite sides of this transversal line. So for example, five is on the left-hand side of the transversal. Six is on the right-hand side of the transversal. If you want to think of this line as a lightning bolt or something that split your house in half, You've got four and six on the right, and you've got three and five on the left, on the interior of your house. So now we're getting there. We're, we're almost nailed down what alternate interior means. Here's the trick. Three and four are both on the interior, and they're both on alternate or opposite sides of the transversal. So you'd think, all right, we've got alternate, one on each side, we've got interior, Three and four must be alternate interior angles, but unfortunately, that is not the case. The alternate interior angles are diagonal from each other. All right, so three and six are actually a pair of alternate interior angles, and five and four are another pair. So if I were to say, what are a pair of alternate interior angles in this picture? There's two right answers. There's angle three and angle six. There's also angle four and angle five. So those are your two pairs of alternate interior angles. They're diagonal from each other. This is another way I like to, like a trick on how to recognize alternate interior is you look for a Z. So like here is a Z and the alternate interior angles are always in the corners of the Z's. Uh, you can draw your Z backwards or sideways or upside down or stretched out. So what I mean is you could claim that this is a Z as well. 
and this would be in the corners of your Z. So you can look for the letter that Z and the alternate interior angles are in your Z. Okay, alternate exterior follows the same logic. They're on the exterior of the house, so they're one, two, seven, and eight. They're on alternate sides or opposite sides of the transversal, and they're diagonal from each other. So seven and eight are not alternate exterior, just like three and four were not. But seven and two are alternate exterior. So angle two and angle seven is alternate exterior. And then you also have one and eight. Angle one and angle eight. So there's two answers. If you get a question, name a pair of alternate interior angles in this picture, there are two correct answers. Just like if they were to ask you, name a pair of alternate exterior angles in this picture, there's two correct answers. Okay, I, that's as best as I can explain in a short amount of time what it means to be alternate interior and alternate exterior. But now we have to move on because there's two more. Well, there's more than two, but the next two set of vocabulary words that I want you to know also have to do with a pair of angles, but these are called corresponding. Let's just do them one at a time. Corresponding. Oh, that's not going to fit. Ooh. Okay, that G got a little teeny tiny as it got to the edge, but it's the word corresponding. I'm going to erase our house for this one. I'm not going to use the house analogy anymore. We're just back to two lines with a third line called a transversal that crosses those two lines. So I'm going to use a different analogy for corresponding, and it's going to be the word corner. Because corner and corresponding kind of start the same. They both start with C O R. And you guys know what the corner means. It's, you know, in the corner of a room. All right. So when I say corners, I'm talking about essentially quadrants. All right. Here's an X Y axis. You could say there's four quadrants in this graph. You have the upper right-hand corner or quadrant. You have the upper left-hand corner. So upper right is typically known as quadrant one. Upper left, lower left, and lower right. And those are typically known as quadrants three and quadrants four. But hopefully you're familiar with the word quadrant. You've seen this before, one, two, three, four. And it's just taking an XY graph and splitting it into four sections. Normally, a lot of times we deal with this one because everything's positive up there. But you've got four corners, right? Well, you've kind of got that in this picture too, but you have two sets of it. So how do I show you that there's two sets of them? I erase a little part of our transversal line. Now all of a sudden it looks like we've got two XY graphs. They're a little tilted and messed up, but you've got the upper one here with four corners in it, and you've got the bottom one down here with four corners in it. And the corners that correspond to each other, that are in the same corner, those angles are corresponding angles. So what I mean is, let's take angle, well, I'll start at one. Angle one would be the upper left-hand corner of this graph, we'll call it, as an analogy. The upper left-hand corner down here in this graph, what's the upper left-hand corner? Well, the upper left-hand corner, this one over here. And what angles are in the upper left-hand corners? One and five. So corresponding angles would be angle one and angle five. Now there's three other sets of corners that match up. You got your upper right on the top set, and you've got your upper right on the bottom set. So two and six are also corresponding and you could probably take it from here and fill in the rest. Your lower lefts are three and seven, angle three and angle seven, and your lower right corners are four and eight. So angles four and angle eight. So for alternate interior and alternate exterior, 
you had two sets of correct answers. For corresponding in this picture, there's four sets of correct answers because there's four different corners and they match up to each other. So there's three types of angles, three vocabulary words that I've given you so far that you need to know that are not going away even after this test. Another one that you need to know is called consecutive interior consecutive so we're back to the word interior which means I'm going to draw my house again because it was so beautiful it deserves to come back to life all right here's our house and we're gonna go back inside the house so interior is three four five six we're just dealing with three four five and six and we're not doing alternate now, so we're not doing on the opposite sides of the transversal. We're doing consecutive. Consecutive means like in a row, like the numbers two and three are consecutive. They're right, they're right in a row. So maybe that helps you remember that the consecutive interior angles here are the ones that are on the same side of the transversal. They're kind of like right in a row. I don't know. You're just going to have to remember that consecutive interior means that they're not diagonal from each other. They're right in a row. They're on the same side of the house. So you might say, well, three and four are right in a row. They're right next to each other. Yeah, but they're on the different sides of the house. They're alternate. They're, three is on the left, four is on the right. We don't want alternate. That would be something different. We want consecutive. We don't want them to be on the same side. As you're going down the transversal here, as you're traveling down the lightning bolt that split your house in half, you get to three, and then the next one you get to is five. Or you get to four on the right, and the next one you get to is six. So there's two right answers for this, angle three and angle five, and then you've got angle four and angle six. Those are your consecutive interior angles. All right, those are the four definitions, the four different pairs of angles that you need to remember when it comes to this picture, when it comes to two lines crossed by another. Now, tomorrow, I'm going to explain what happens when these two lines happen to be parallel to each other. And if they happen to be parallel, now a lot of these angles that I talked about today are going to be equal to each other. They're going to have the same amount of degrees in them. But you don't need to know that for today. Right now, you just need to recognize what angles are consecutive interior? What angles are alternate interior? You just got to know your vocabulary. You got to know your definitions. And then tomorrow we'll get into what happens when those some of those angles are actually equal to each other. And then we'll be a little bit of algebra review. But that'll be enough to get through your little vocabulary problems for today.